good. Uh, my name is John. Uh, I get to talk to you for a little bit. I think I said I can talk to you for a couple hours, so that'd be cool. No, I'm just joking. Like 20 minutes. Um, how many of you guys got less than three hours of sleep last night? Less than three hours? Anybody? Okay, we got a couple here. Anybody get over six hours of sleep last night? Yeah, okay. Yeah, six hours. We're feeling, all right, so we're feeling good. We're feeling pretty good. Uh, little, all right, so real quick, we're going to we'll get to know each other a little bit over the next 20, 25 minutes. All right, cool. Uh, like I said, my name's John. Uh, I get to be one of the, the pastors at Awaken. Um, I am married. I have four kids. They're all girls. Uh, nine, six, three, and one. Uh, so last night, my, uh, my oldest was her birthday. We had like four other girls at our house. So I was outnumbered big time, but it was a lot of fun. We watched, watched Moana and went to the Austin Aquarium. How many of you guys have been to the Austin Aquarium before? That's like the wild west of aquariums. You get to touch everything. It's like, well, this can't be legal, right? These are like all those things. But uh, yeah, I'm really glad. I'm really glad I get to be with you guys uh, this morning. We're talking about, uh, so this weekend, I think uh, Pastor Daniel kicked it off yesterday. And does anybody remember? I know it's been, a, it's been a minute, right? Anybody remember what Pastor Daniel talked about yesterday? Anyone? Anyone? Just shout, shout it out. What's like one or two things that you took, you took away from last night? Anything, anybody? Freedom. To know Jesus is to know the truth. What did you say over here? Freedom. freedom. Yeah. Finding, finding freedom in Jesus. Knowing Jesus is, is knowing the truth. Knowing Jesus is, is uh, knowing freedom. And so that's what this weekend, you know, it's all about. Um, I, it's all about, you know, knowing Jesus and finding freedom. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick up a little bit on this this morning, uh, but I told you a little bit about myself. I uh, want to know a little bit about, about you guys in, in just a second. I'm going to ask you a question. So we're going to talk about finding freedom in, in our, our stress, finding freedom in our, in our despair. And I'm, I'm sure, uh, you, you know, you, you've experienced like a day where just, you, know, you just get stressed out. Like, man, I just, I just need to be by myself. I can't be around people anymore. This person is stressing me. That person, whatever, you get stressed out. So here's my question for you: What what's something that that stresses you out? You can you can yell it out. Doesn't have to be crazy serious. What's what's what stresses you out? What's over here? Society. Okay, that's a big general the culture of society. What else? What over here? Math. Math stresses you out. Okay, anybody love math? Okay, we got a couple people. What else stresses you out? What stresses you out? Homework. All right. People. All of you guys. No. Anyone else? What else stresses you out? What did you say? Chores. Yeah. What did you say? Driving. Yeah. People are crazy when they get behind a wheel, right? Anyone else? What else stresses you out? What? I don't know what that is. I'm sorry. Yeah. Anyone else? What stresses you out? Final call? Stress stresses you out. Yeah. Anxiety. Anxiety, right? All right, here's, here's the point. Being alive. Being alive. Okay. We can pray after. Um, here, here's the thing, guys and gals. Uh, we, all have, we all have things in our lives that, that stress us out. Maybe they're people, right? Maybe they're sitting next to you. Um, but no, we have... We have stuff. And some of them are, you know, they're silly things, right? Uh, like, like chores or math. But some of them, maybe they're, maybe they're really serious. Maybe some of y'all came into this weekend and, and you guys are facing some real stuff, facing some, some big issues, whether it's, you know, with your family or with your friends. You, you carry these things into, the, into this weekend. And so uh, hopefully this morning... Right, going along with the, the theme, we'll find some hope and we'll, we'll find some freedom in, in what Jesus offers us and what we can do with those, those, those things we bring in. And we just feel like they're just weighing us down. They're causing us to do things maybe we're not supposed to do or causing us to, to become people we, we didn't think we, we would become. And so hopefully this, you know, this morning over the next whatever 20 minutes, we'll find some hope in, in who Jesus is. That, I think that sounds good, right? Uh, so before we read uh, any, any scripture, I want to encourage you guys to uh, pray with me. So 
Uh, bow your heads, close your eyes. Lord, we're, we're thankful this morning that we get to be together. Uh, that whatever we came in here with, it doesn't matter. You love us, and, and you're committed to us. And so I pray that we would, we'd find freedom in you, Jesus. And we find hope in who you are and, and how, how, you, how you love us so much and, and that you would help us to see the way that, that you see us, Lord, through, through your eyes. Um, and we, we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, so if any of you guys have your Bibles, you can open it up, uh, Psalm 118, or you can turn on your, your Bible apps on your phone. You can do that as well. Uh, we're going to read uh, just a few verses. We'll stop, talk about it for a second, and then uh, we'll read a few more. So Psalm 118, we're going to read verses uh, 1 through 4 to start. We'll eventually read 1 through 9. If you uh, want to be an overachiever, you can uh, read those ahead of time. But uh, you can read with me 1 through 4. They're going to be on the screen as well, which is so convenient. Look at that. Um, all right, it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he's good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his steadfast love endures forever. All right, you can leave those, leave those verses up for a minute or two. I think it's good just to have those in front of us. So going through this verse, uh, first thing that the psalmist says, which I think is David, King David wrote this. He, he says, give thanks to the Lord, he's good. And, uh, you know, you look at that and like, okay, how many of your parents, they ask you, hey, how was your day? And you're like, that was good, right? <laughs> you're like, that was good, mom. That was good. Yeah, it was good. It's like basically the, the, the answer you give, you're like, I don't want to talk about my day anymore, right? You're like, oh, it's good. And so we could, we could quick, quickly read by that. And I, I did, right? I was like, oh, good, thanks, Lord. He's good. We can quickly read by it and really not think anything of it. And, and, and so what I want to key in about God being good is it's not an underwhelming description. It's like, oh yeah, he's good. God's good. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, yeah, let's, let's, let's move on. What this means is God is, he's all the way good. There's nothing about God that is not good. He's entirely good. Everything about God is good. And that means we always have a reason to give thanks to who God is. Anyone and everyone in this room has a reason to thank God for something. And, and so here's my, here's my question. I said, you know, you come in with stress, you come in with things, you come in with things that you, you carry. And my question is, in your life, you know, big picture, or maybe small picture right now, are you focusing, are you focusing on the good things in your life? Or are you fixed on maybe the one or the two or the three things that aren't going your way? Are you, are you focusing on good things? Or are you focusing on bad? It's a simple question, right? And, and I, I told you I had four girls. And they fight about the stupidest things, which that's a bad word in our family. Our girls, they say, they said the S word. Like, what? Stupid. I'm like, oh, okay. But anyways, they fight about the silliest things. That's an appropriate word. Uh, and so I frequently have to... My, my daughter who's six, her name is Anna. She's just, you know, she's middle child. How many of you guys are middle, middle children? I don't know. Maybe it has something to do with that. You guys are awesome. I love Anna. She's my little buddy. But uh, I frequently have to take her aside, and they're, like, fighting about, like, a pencil. Like, that's my pencil! Give it to me! And I was like, uh, I frequently take her aside, and I'm like, Anna, look, look, at, look at me. Like, look at everything else you have. Look at all the things you have. We don't need to be getting upset about this pencil, right? And, and you're like, okay, John, I got more serious things in my life than pencils, right? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I get it, right? But maybe, maybe what God wants to do this weekend, or what he wants to do this morning, is he wants to get your distraction, your eyes off all the distractions, all the things that, you, you know, you see and you're fixed in on, this one thing in my life needs to be better. Or, Man, this, this one person is just, you know, and get... Get your eyes off that and get your eyes on Jesus. Get your eyes on God, and he's good. He's good. And so when we have these verses here, is love endures forever. What that means is he's never going to stop pursuing you. He's never going to stop loving you. And, you know, we have these weird 
you know, things where the psalmist write, like, who, who's going to say the house, or who's going to say his love endures forever? The house of Aaron. Uh, okay, okay, well, let Israel say, all right, that, that doesn't have anything to do with me. What, what David's saying here is, everyone has a reason to give thanks. And so, the Old Testament, it's, <laughs> the, uh, um, something that the, uh, Israel frequently did was, like, remember. And so he's saying, like, let the house of Aaron, let, you know, those who fear the Lord, that's like all of Israel. And so what they did was they, they remembered. They were, they were supposed to remember what God's, you know, done for them. And so how many of you guys have read the Old Testament? Anybody read the Old Testament here? Thrilling read, right? Something that you just are stuck to. It is interesting. But it's, it's hard, right? Because there's thousands and thousands of years. And here's the, here's the point. This is the point of the Old Testament. I'll save you guys some time. It's still very good to read. The point of the Old Testament is God, God is very good. And God calls people and he shows them his love. He's like, this is how much I love you. I'm committed to you, committed to you forever and ever. And people are like, yeah, this is awesome. I'm going to serve you forever. I'm never going to disobey you. And then the next page you're like, oh my gosh, this person just killed somebody. They just said they weren't going to do that, right? It's just it's a story over and over again about God doing really good things for people, pursuing them, loving them, and people disobeying. But then it's God, all right, I'm still committed to you. I still love you. Come back to me. Come on back. I love you. Still committed to you. I love you. And they're like, all right, yeah, we're going to love you forever. And then, right, the guy who wrote this, David, yeah, he killed Goliath. Yes, he became king. But he also, he also committed adultery. He also murdered a guy to, to marry that woman. The guy was messed up. But what he experienced was that God's love didn't quit on him when he made mistakes. God's love didn't quit on him because he had all these things going around him. No, it pursued him. It endured forever. And so that's why we, we have to remember, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you came into this room with, no matter what you've experienced in your life, God's going to pursue you and he's going to love you through it all. His faithfulness is going to call you back to him. God's love is stronger than any sin, any mistake you've ever made. God's love endures forever. And, and so, you know, you may have all these things, you know, whatever, swirling in your life, and, and you may have stress and, 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 you know, a bunch of distractions, but we're called to come back and remember that God's good. And he loves you. And he's committed to you. And so I don't know where this, this finds you. Maybe this, this finds you believing a, a lie that, that you're bad because you've done bad. And that God's just done with you. It's not true. Or, or maybe, maybe you think, well, I, I just have to, or I got to fix myself up. I have to improve myself before I can, you know, start making, start, start coming to God. And start reading the Bible. Start doing, that's, no. God, God is pursuing you right now. God is not like us. He's good. His love is unchanging. God is good even when we're not. And so, you know, that's my, my point. If you want to take notes, if you want to, whatever, write it in your notes app. God's unchanging. He's always good. He's unfailing in his goodness to us. God's unchanging and unfailing and his goodness to us. <clears throat> uh, let's keep reading a couple more verses. Uh, we're already like halfway done, guys. There we go. Good news. Um, all right, so verse 5. David writes, Out of my distress, I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me, and he set me free. The Lord's on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord's on my side as my helper. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. Whoa, okay. He's got serious there. The Lord's on my side. Out of my distress, I call to the Lord. Look at, look at that verse, verse 5. Out of my distress, I call to the Lord. Um, you don't have to answer this out loud. I want you to think about it just for a second. What do you do when you're stressed out? What do you, what do, you do when you, feel, when you feel stressed? All right, I, you don't have to answer. Right? And this is not about embarrassing people. So I did some research, spent a whole lot of time. Actually, I just Googled it, and this is like what, 
what came up, like what are the most common things people do when they're stressed out. So you can relate to some of these things that I'm saying. Um, all right, here it is. This is what common things people do when they feel distress or despair, feel stressed out. Eat too much <laughs> or too little. Amen. I like that. Yeah. Give me that ice cream. Um, spend or shop too much. All right. There we go. Not exercise as much as you should or exercise too much. Grind your teeth or clench your jaw when you're stressed out. <laughs> then they start to get a little more serious. Uh, withdraw from people around you. Worry or have feelings of dread. Snap at people. Bite your nails. Um, use drugs. All right. <laughs> get restless like you can't sit still or cry or feel tearful. <clears throat> what do you do? What do you do when you feel distress, despair? And what the psalmist David, who, who wrote this, was, is he says, what? I call the Lord. I call to the Lord. And so, you know, really simple. <laughs> I mean, that's just what we need to do, right? When we feel stressed, all right, just go to the Lord. It's re that's a really simple thing. Start to pray. You know, turn, turn on a worship song. Um, as I was preparing for this message, I was doing some research uh, about this, this passage it's really cool if you read um, if you read the Gospels and they, they they show you what Jesus was doing right before he went to the cross. And some of you guys know this, right? He had the meal with his disciples and he washed their feet. And uh, then it says there's this little little tagline. It says they sang a they sang a song together. And then they went to the garden. And you guys know at the garden that's when all the people came, they arrested them. And the rest is history, right? He went on to, to be crucified. So the song that they sang, people think it was actually this psalm, which is like really incredible. If, if, you, if you read those words, like, the Lord answered me, he set me free. The Lord's on my side, I will not fear. What can man do to me? And, and so Jesus was in this place when he's about to go to the cross and he's, you know, he's singing, singing the song. Um, and like, you know, if you're looking at this, you're like, oh, what can man do to me? And like, well, actually, like, it can kind of do a lot. And like, Jesus, he sang the song and what did, what did men do to him? Right? They killed him. So we're like, all right, well, what is that? What, is that? what does that mean? What is that? And, and, and you're, you're here, you know, you're thinking, you're like, yeah, okay, like I'm going to go to Jesus and all my problems, right, are just going to go away. And that's, that's not true. When you, when you leave here today or tomorrow, when you go back to school on Monday, life's going to go on as it always does. Like the stresses that you came in into this room with, the people or the math, right, it, it still exists. It's not just going to, to, to vanish into thin air, right? Like that, that, that doesn't happen. And so, you know, what's the, what's the takeaway? What, is, you know, what does it really mean to find freedom? It's not, it's not to have all the external things go away. It's for God to change what's inside of you. It's for God to change your heart. And so that, you know, when you, when you do go through things, that you don't compromise who Jesus has called you to be in the midst of those things. And that Jesus was able to, to be killed and, and fulfill the mission that he was put on this earth to do despite all the pain and suffering that he would go through. And that's, that's, God's, that's God's promise to you and God's promise for, you know, to give you freedom it's not to remove everything outside. It's to change who you are inside so that you don't have to compromise who Jesus has created you to be so that you don't have to keep falling into the, the same sins over and over again. It's for him to set you free. It's so that you don't have to compromise under the pressure of the people around you, but you can start to influence the people around you. That's what freedom really is. It's so, it's so that God can change what's inside of you so that you can walk out who he's called you to be. And, and look at what verse 7 says. It says, the Lord's on my side as, as my helper. And, and I want to give you guys some hope. Is that when, when you ask Jesus in your life, when you begin this relationship with him, <laughs> he promises to never leave you. 
He promises to always be with you. And the hope that we have, he's not just by your side. Scripture says that he's like living within you. He's close to you. There's a scripture that says the same, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives within you. That Jesus gives you, give you po- his power that raised him from the dead. <clears throat> and so, here's the, here's the thing. It, it doesn't matter. Like it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what man can do to you. It doesn't matter what your friends can say about you or the stresses that you face in life. When you find your worth and your value in Jesus, Find your worth and your value in Jesus. And so you know, the question I have for you is, what, what, are you, what are you finding your worth and your value in? What do you go to? What do you go to when you feel stress? What do you go to when things aren't going as they should? It's probably what you find your value in. It's probably what you find your comfort in. Go to Jesus. Run to Jesus. Jesus can set you free from the despair, the distress of your life. Uh, I'm going to finish up here in whatever, two minutes. So, uh, Bree, you can come on back up. We're going to sing a song in a second. Um, read the final couple of verses here. Verse 8 and 9. It says, It's better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It's better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in in princes. I don't know any princes, but uh, better to take refuge in the Lord. So here's my, maybe my last question for you. Maybe not. I might ask you another question. We'll see. Who do, you, who, do you, who do you go to when you need peace? Who, who do you go to when you're stressed out? And, uh, you know, you can look, look around the room, right? You got some good people here. There's some, there's some cool people in this room. There's some youth leaders, youth pastors. You got some really good friends. And uh, the people in your life right now that are encouraging you to follow Jesus, that's great. That's really good. Um, you, need, you need those people. You need youth pastors, youth leaders, friends. But here's, here's the point. They're not Jesus. And I got some news uh, for you guys. Uh, some of you might be really excited to hear this news. And just how many seniors do I have here? Juniors, juniors and seniors, juniors and seniors. Let's see. That's a good, that's a good chunk. Senior, would you say senior in middle school? <laughs> All right, there we go. <laughs> Never heard it called that before. Eighth grade. Um, that's cool. Here's the news. Your life's about to change. And some of you are like, yeah, let me get out of here. This is awesome. But no, your, your life's going to change real quick, real fast. And the people in this room, you don't get to just take them with you, right? Everywhere you go. And some of you are like, yeah, I don't want to take them with me. But life's going to change. Your habits are going to change. Your routines are going to change. Classes, influences, all these things are going to change. You're not going to have the same youth pastor. You're not going to get to come to youth all the time, every week. It's different. And, and so here's the point in that. You can't, you can't learn to depend on on people to distract you from the stresses of life. Because the people around you, they're going to change, even if they're good. Even if they're great influences, you've got to learn to to run to Jesus because he doesn't change. He's the safe place always. So whether you go to college or whether you go to work or, or, or whatever you do, Jesus doesn't change. And so that's why, it, you know, it's great to have this, this awesome community to encourage you and to help you, but, but we got to go to Jesus. Every, it's got to be founded on who Jesus is. And so life's going to change. The, the, the people that you have around you, you know, but Jesus doesn't. And so God is always, always a safe place for your despair for your stress, for your fear, your anxiety. It's always God. He is always the safe place. He'll always give you peace. So as as we close,